Hi, my name is Laura McCullough, and tonight I'm going to share my poem and story entitled Hope is Like a Bird. Now, as a writer and a poet, I so often don't get the opportunity to tell the stories behind what I write. People read them when they're published and weave their own stories to go behind them. So I was excited about this opportunity. Um, you know, some of my friends that know me, they, they know me as a happy and upbeat person. They're sometimes startled by what I write. A lot of my poetry is a little sad or even a little dark, but uh, we are all stories with many chapters. You know, some of my earlier chapters were a little challenging uh, throughout my life and you know some of the darker parts of my life. One of the constants that I had was uh, my grandmother, a fierce Austrian woman named Rosie, my Oma. You know, she was a, a formidable woman and she formed much of, of who I am and, and the foundations of my understanding of family. But as I look back, I, I have these snapshots along her journey of who she was. And I never realized as a child how few and far between those snapshots I had were. I, I have this shot of her mother, uh, a raven-haired beauty from Salzburg. And then later, after her mother died at a young age, I have these snapshots of a cold and uncaring Czechoslovakian grandmother and, and scrubbing marquetry floors with a boar bristle brush. And I have these highlights of the one hour a week she had for her own joy to go and watch Lippas on her horses training at their school on her way home in the summer. And in the winter, she would go to the city park and ice skate. And I, that's another snapshot that I have is, is freedom four minutes at a time when we would watch figure skating championships or the Olympics. And then when Katarina Witt won the gold, um, the joy on my Oma's face. I didn't realize how few and far between my experiences of joy with my Oma were. I, I knew the warmth of her hugs and the warmth of her apple pies, but I didn't realize until much later when I had my own family and, and had written more of my own story, how much coldness there was between those moments of war. I, you know, later, when my father passed away, my aunt and I went and found photo albums that had been tucked away in cupboards. And when we opened them up, these were pictures I had never seen in my entire life. No one had ever thought it was important to show me pictures of when my Oma and Papa met, I, I found out then that she met him when she was selling potatoes on the black market to servicemen. And along came my dapper, well-decorated GI of a Papa. And the, just the pieces of that story, their wedding in a, uh, an army base in Texas, you know, the, the pictures of my aunt and her tap shoes or her ballet dresses. I never knew any of those things or that my father looks exactly like my middle son. These, these were things that they saw no value in sharing. And they had no idea how that would affect my idea of self. My own internal history had gaps in it and it made me very sad to, to think of not valuing the pieces of one's own story to the point that they didn't think they were worth telling. You know, and, and as I said, there are some stories that are sad, but the encouragement in it is that every chapter is important. You know, hope and joy, I, I, I said the title is Hope is Like a Bird. Well, hope and joy are our choices that we make they will reside with us if we build them a place to live. And creating those gaps in their own stories left so much room for hope to fly away. So this is the poem that I've written called Hope is Like a Bird. At the death of distance, we found them together, my aunt and I, 
elbows touching at the kitchen table, she cleaned last for my father and first for this missing person, their artifact a trail of little black and white squares. In albums, we found them, hiding from life with the people in them, gray icons of a world sure it had always existed. But I knew better. The history that would betray the gaps by filling them was cast with characters from someone else's story. How could my life be shaped so by a woman hiding in plain sight? Shreds of what I could touch, pattern paper and unfinished curtain hems, the outline of a person somehow enough to set my moorings, yet not able to bear any weight. In some battles, the only survivor is the fear of everything. The most resourceful woman I've ever known brought herself across an ocean, but could never bring herself to teach me anything that might hurt, could never bring up the hurting already there. She was a whole continent to me, afternoons and decades given to places no one has ever really been. The smell of her on the couch where she sat to a child was never the smell of an unwashed body, or of spark and wit turned to a spiraling self-neglect. Spiraling like endless apple peels, skinned for pies that said I love you, when no one knew the words. It was never the smell of isolation. It was just her. All the beauty in the world lived in her mother, fading in gelatin and silver with well-groomed borzois. The after made her angry, hard in the buried places and settled with bitterness. The warmth and wonder held in smooth hands, the longing in her voice when she spoke of anywhere but here, all calendar pages and clipped wings. Hope fossilized in linoleum is too brittle an anchor for much footing this side of the wall. The story she chose for me to know her, scattered coins never enough together to buy a meal. So much less her than the smell of the couch. Fear of wasting and wanting steeped into the spine of the house, pressing your weak points so that you would be strong, more than they were, better. For all the birds we could not eat and the bones that wouldn't scrape clean, she gave me only and all the parts of herself that could stand the sunlight. But I don't think I ever wanted to be better, only to be whole. The sadness in the story is also a story of hope because from the choices of others, we can build a different story for ourselves. Build a story for those that we love with all of us included. Recognizing that fear of wholeness for ourselves and for our story, it only takes away the pieces that they'll have to write later. <laughs> Share yourselves, share yourselves with those you love, share yourselves with the world because you have a story worth telling.